Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of FTB Revelation. How are you doing today? How's life? I just found the most beautiful block in modded Minecraft. That's a gravel. Uh, I meant I have found the most beautiful block in modded Minecraft, which is a smoker from Railcraft. Look, it's amazing. We can use it in a chimney somehow, but right now we don't have any chimneys. So I was hoping to use it in a build. They make jerkies with smoke, right? Can we make a smokehouse? Let's give it a try. So we need to test a few stuff. Um, here's a drying rack and here is a hopper. Can we feed it automatically using a hopper? So if I put rotten flesh inside here, it will go there. That is very good. Do you also take it out? No. Do you take it out if it's a jerky? If I put the hopper here, it will take out the jerky. That's nice. Okay, it's easy then. I just made some pulsating iron because I think it would be much easier to automate this using conduits from Ender.io rather than using a hopper. Hoppers are slow and it takes five minutes to make a jerky. So I think a conduit is a far better option. Yeah, we will have plenty. This drying rack is incredibly smart. You don't expect that from a piece of wood because it's not allowing the rotten flesh to go back inside the chest even though I have extract enabled on the conduit. It's waiting for it to be converted into zombie jerky. So that makes it very easy, I guess. Oh, but we do need a filter because if we have zombie jerky inside the chest, then that will also go on the drying rack, I guess. Let me try. So if we remove you and put you here, so yeah, we do need a filter, okay. Function wise, I think it's done. I do have 16 drying racks and I do have 16 filters in each and every one of these conduit connectors, which only allows rotten flesh to go on the drying racks. And then the result, the zombie jerky, should come into this barrel. We can also put the rotten flesh inside the barrel. So let's see if it works. Yeah, it does. Okay, that was easy. We just need to think of a facade and I was thinking of using some sort of a brick. What kind of brick can we use? Bricks, oh. Uh, ash bricks are nice. You need ash, which comes from charcoal pile. That's expensive. We can use seared bricks and we can chisel it. It even looks nice. Well, it's not great, but it's also not that horrifying. And yes, I do watch Chernobyl. Hi. <laughs> I'm also very happy that these drying racks stand in mid air. So it's like we're hanging the meat to be smoked. I think it's neat. Anyway, uh, we do have some food and I need to go on some adventuring. Uh, we can work on this later on. I'm already geared up and we need to find a desert. We need to find additional oil and I need cactus. I can make cactus from Botania, but... Uh, that requires a bit of infrastructure. It would be easier if you find cactus. And also I might find a village and I might find something interesting. Let's see what we will find. Well, I found a dead dragon. That's a good start. We can get the bones. And it was a female. That's sad. Oh, we got a skull. That's nice. Two meteors right next to each other. And I completely forgot about applied energistics. It's good that we can get the inscribers. Alright guys, I'm back from our adventure and I thought before I bring you guys in and show you the loot, I'll do some mining. I'm looking for platinum, well not technically platinum because you cannot find it in the overworld, but if you find nickel and pulverize it, there is a chance that you will get platinum and with that we can make enderium and upgrade my satchels. Uh, but I did find something interesting which is relatively rare. This is a structure by Astral Sorcery and this is probably the second time I have ever seen this. Once you break this block, it will just provide you with ores. Also, the ore dictionary is messed up, so it gives you tin ore from Project Red, it gives you copper ore from Project Red, and I think it also gives you other garbage ores. Yeah, well, I'll be doing this for a while. We only had two drums of oil to start with, and although we are not consuming that much, I thought it's nice to have a small buffer. So, I do have five drums full from this new oil field, and I thought instead of staying here and AFKing for a few hours, I'll just hook it up to a few drums and chunk load the entire area. And I think you still have some oil left. Yeah, that should be two barrels, and we are not in a very good position. Okay, we go up. Do you guys want to know a secret? Every time I start a modded series, I'm thinking to myself, how long can I survive? 
without getting into applied energistics and using just storage drawers and chests and other storage methods that are available in the game. The answer to that is not that long. <laughs> we already had three of the inscribers we require in order to make the processors and we missed only the calculation press. Luckily, there was a meteor next to our base and it had the calculation press. It was just not in an ideal location. Let's hope no one shoots me. We are going to need two ME drives, one crafting terminal and one controller. Uh, we don't technically need the controller, you're going to need the controller if you're using more than 8 channels and I don't think we are going to, but we might as well make it. Nothing happened. Ah, okay. Where did it go? <laughs> oh, here. Okay. So, fun fact. If you put one sand inside the draconic chest, it will give you two glass. <laughs> it doubles everything. Applied Energistics runs on a different power source than RF, so I have made an energy acceptor and I have made some cables. The first thing that I normally make is a charger so that I can convert normal Surtur's cores into the charged version. Because you don't get that many charged versions when you're mining and uh, this is the best way of converting it. It's charged, right? Yeah. For crystal growth accelerators, we add the water and we drop our seeds inside and this should be done in a few minutes. I dropped them, right? I can't see them. <laughs> they should be in there anyway. In my opinion, this is the most boring part of the game, trying to make processors, and we do not have advanced inscribers, so this is going to be slightly more challenging. Anyway, I made 64 of you, so you go from the top, right? And then redstone goes in the middle, and silicon should be from here? So do you work? No, it don't work. Do you have to go from the back? Dude, there are no other sides. Which way would you go in? From the bottom? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I think I have enough material to make one controller and maybe two drives? Yes. Perfect. Alright guys, we had enough material in order to make three 16k storage cells, which is good enough, and four 4k storage cells. We're out of quartz, so yeah. <laughs> so we put you guys inside and let me try something. Can we power the controller directly? We can. Okay. You couldn't do that in the past. But in any case, our applied energistic system is fully functional and we can deposit items inside. Perfect, I'm very happy. I should have done this a long time ago. It's fully functional and I have dumped everything inside. The only problem is we don't have that much items to dump inside. <laughs> I need to go mining because I'm totally out of resources. So I'll be back very soon, I guess. Alright guys, now that we have an applied energistic system, I also decided to make a very small machine area. It's nothing very fancy, we have just pulverizers, magma crucibles, a sawmill, a few induction furnaces and so on. And I also made a very small device in order to make obsidian. Uh, it's actually very easy, I'll show you. So, if we get netherrack and put it here, it will go inside the magma crucible and because of this augment, each netherrack will give us one bucket of lava. And this guy will make an obsidian, deposit it here. I can also change it to, I don't know, basalt or anything else that I want. And everything automatically goes into our applied energistic system through ender chests. There's also another one over there. I think it's fine. Didn't have that many decorative blocks, so yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, one of the mods that I want to get into as soon as possible is Botania. Botania is a magic mod and magic mods are useful to you when you start them early on. They're not that useful after you kill the Chaos Guardian, because <laughs> they will give you interesting tools, interesting buffs and generally will make life easier for you. So we need to gather some mystical flowers and I just made a stack of floral fertilizer and I think we have enough, because we need only one of each flower, right? Yeah, we have plenty. And the reason that I said we only need one flower is that once you convert it into a petal, you can plant it, you can use bone meal, and then you can shear it. And then you will have four. 
flower that we are going to make in the petal apothecary is called a pure daisy and we just need four white petals and one seed how do you get it ah, okay <laughs> and i think if we right click with an empty hand it will just repeat the recipe no ah okay and then one more seed cool I made four pure daisies and we're going to use two of them in order to make living wood and two of them in order to make living rock so that it will be faster because if we use one it's going to take a very long time we just need to wait The first thing that we are going to craft is called a wand of the forest and it is our wrench and I like it to be lime because it's a nice color. To get us started with mana generation I think the best solution is to go with endo flames because endo flames do not die out and we only have two options to get started with it's either this one or endo flame and I'm saying this one because I cannot pronounce that name. Hi. And one endo flame. While making this, I'm always very confused. I think we are going to need a golden pressure plate here, then a redstone torch, which I just dropped it there, and then one block on top and a piece of redstone. And yes, it does drop the coal. So we plant our endo flames and we give it a kickstart. And by kickstart, I just mean drop one coal. Do you consume it? Yes, very good. And we drop the rest of the coal. And this should fill in with mana. Is there any man? Yep. Good. We did have a black lotus which I found in a chest. And this is the mistake that I do every single time because the mana spreader is sensitive to redstone. So if you put it next to the pressure plate, it's gonna be deactivated. So what if we do you? And now you guys are not connected. So please get connected. Yeah, it seems to be working fine. Cool. This guy is incredibly slow and that dropper is not incredibly accurate. It sometimes misses the pressure plate. But in any case, if we want to make this work a little bit faster, maybe we should start getting into making some lenses. In order to make lenses, we are going to need a runic altar and we are also going to need another mana spreader in order to power that runic altar. So one more mana spreader. We put you here. If I make a composite lens of velocity and potency for that guy, I should be able to speed this thing up a little bit. We are also going to need some mana powder. So let me gather some stuff. I'll be right back. We're going to need a rune of fire and a rune of air in order to make the lenses that I want. And I think that was the recipe for a rune of fire. Yes. Okay, cool. We're going to need a living rock. We put you on top and we wait. Just a bit more. Haha, our first rune. One lens of velocity and we can also make one lens for potency. And then I forgot the most important thing. Do we have any slime balls? No. Do you still work? You know, there was a trick which you can convert these guys into normal slime balls. Yeah, it does work. Okay, so we put you here. We only need one. Thank you. Not sure if it helps a lot, but it should help a little bit. At least. This setup is really bad because most of the times the dropper just misses the pressure plate and drops the coal on the ground and well then you don't get any more coal. It's just one block. How can you miss? <laughs> anyway, the first uh, bubble that we're going to need from Batania is a band of mana and we just dump it inside you and charge you up with mana. Takes a bit of time. It's not a lot of mana but yeah, we're going to make a band of aura because that guy will make a little bit of mana over time and will deposit it inside the band of mana. So we will generate mana passively. You see, it stopped. <laughs> we have to make a precision dropper from actually additions, but uh, let's do the trinkets first and then I'll come back to this. I basically knew what I wanted, so I made all the runes that we required. We're going to make a pyroclast pendant, this will give us fire protection and it goes inside our bubble slot. Then we are going to need the benevolent goddess charm, which will give us protection against creepers and I forgot one mana diamond. Benevolent charm and no more creeper holes. Then the sojourner sash and this will give us step assist, speed boost and also jump boost. It's amazing. 
I love this. Bubbles are done and now we should start making the rods. Well, the first rod is the rod of the lands and you can place dirt. If you have mana, of course. Then it's the rod of the seas, which is basically a water bucket, but an infinite one. I made a mess, I made a mess. One rod of the depths, which will put cobblestone. And most importantly, the rod of the shifting crust. Finally, the hand of the ender, which is basically an ender chest, which you can open it inside your inventory, if you have mana. And we just dump everything inside, that's it, right? And you too. This is the problem that I have with the dropper. It drops the coal everywhere except on the pressure plate. And it's just one block gap. I don't know how it can miss. But if we make a precision dropper from actually additions, our problem should be solved. But we need an atomic reconstructor first. One atomic reconstructor. We give you power. We have a redstone torch to toggle the mode and a button. And we just need some lapis. Boom. Precision dropper and let's hope this fixes our problem. It's night time. So why didn't you work? Oh, you're on the activation mode. Okay, pulse mode. Yeah, we need another code. So do you work now? Hopefully? Without any problem? Yeah, that was easy. Well, this is going to be our mana generation setup for a while and I cannot provide this with coal all the time so maybe we should provide it with charcoal because that's easy to make this is fun look so that gave me almost eight stacks of logs in two minutes that, that that's awesome it's been a few minutes later and so far this precision dropper has been working like a charm look this is how much mana we got from basically coal and charcoal. <laughs> anyway, before we finish the episode, there is something that I want to address. In the comments of the last episode, you guys told me the gluttony charm is not working because I don't have it in my bubble slot. Uh, no, that's not the problem. If you have it in your inventory, it will work. It just doesn't work with drinks. That's my problem. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been awesome. Anyway, there is something else that I want to do, and that is to upgrade my sword. So bone gives you fractured, your tool does additional damage. Dragon bone gives you fractured too, so it does more damage than fractured one. <laughs> I do have a lot of dragon bones. Yeah, look, <laughs> I have 87 dragon bones and six skulls. I did not kill a single dragon. I, I just found their corpses everywhere. I think they saw me and had a heart attack. So should we just change the guard? Yeah, I guess it makes sense. And how much damage do you do now? 10.7. If I switch it... Wow. <laughs> That's a huge difference. Okay. Thank you. Anyway, guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Next episode, if we manage to get into Ender.io and make a small mock farm, our life will be very good. And maybe we can also start with Tomcraft. Anyway... Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.